Okay, moving on. And there's not much to say. I'm just sitting here listening to you guys. You have the chance. Okay, to... so Shannon, what have you been watching on this new anime list? Me. There's actually a lot that's either Moe or Slice of Life or both or crap. But I have to say, there's animes called Jormungand and Zetman, which are basically, I guess, Black Lagoon mixed with Hellsing ripoffs. But they're actually, oh, it's it's more on the serious side. So if you're not into blood and gore, then I recommend you stay the fuck away from this anime. We always so uh, I think I think next we're going to talk something about something something dark side something something live action. I believe, Ross. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, that's Tokuma. what I'm trying to segue into. Okay, so let, let me just kind of lead into this with I'm not a huge fan of Sentai or any of the uh, really Ross, live acting like get, I, I, um, shows that from Japan. So mostly like kid show stuff, even by like American standards. I did watch some of the recent pirate Sentai Gokaiga, and it was so pretty actually... interesting from what I've seen, but I didn't stick with it. Wait, wait but a second. apparently, Pirates I mean, I grew up watching Power Rangers in America because you know, go, go, pretty go, much almost Rangers. every kid my age did. So they decided to release a complete and other parody of not only like all of the live action Sentai stuff made by the same people that make the Sentai show. Really? <laughs> but they also parody pretty much every facet of otaku culture in it. Oh, well, that's called... what's not to like. And it's called Unofficial Sentai Akiba Ranger. I believe it's the entire like... premise of this show is that the three main characters have delusions that they're Sentai. Yeah, and the, it, the, fact, the fact that they're having a delusion is pretty much thrown onto our face. There is not even ambiguity in it. Yes, there are... Oh, well, they... Do not even told it? Yeah, and that, just that's that's what I just caring. said. That's what, Fucking that's genius. What, by the way, yes, I've uh, we've seen three episodes of that uh, unofficial Super Sentai show, and we absolutely love it. Right, Ross? This is me. Oh, oh, me and you. Oh, actually, I just saw the fourth one today. Oh, oh, the fourth is out. The fourth is out. I'm gonna watch it right now. Uh, be back, be back later. After the podcast. Do, 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 do. Okay, you are I'm, not okay. feeling out. Okay, I'm back, and I love it. Escape is impossible because I have ninjas watching you. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, take your ninja, and I have the power of friendship in it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm invincible. Love it. <laughs> it's my own weakness. Oh uh, yes, it's the power, of, and, I'm, and you know what? I'm going to love and tolerate the shit out of both of you, <laughs> maggots. No, I, mean, I can withstand oh, Tony by the second. That was me cleverly foreshadowing our next argument. Oh God, ponies Penny. from hell. Fucking ponies. <laughs> I love ponies. Uh, you, do you like ponies, Shannon Kazane, aka Miss Esme, aka female token character? It's something I can sit through. I mean, if I was paid to do it, oh god, yes. But it's something I wouldn't watch on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I kind of, I kind of like it for several reasons. I believe Ross, you recently, uh, put, you recently posted a video review about. One particular episode of that show, and you do, and you did it on your own free will, right? Oh uh, yes, the freest will. <laughs> it's oh come on! It's not like I held your family hostage, threatening to to exile them on the moon. I know that's beyond your means, but hey, you had to sit through the crap I had you do, and I still haven't seen Shannon's review of Sonic Labyrinth yet. You oh, I did it. Uh, she did it. I did it like weeks ago. Yes. Huh. Oh, I must have missed it, it somehow. It wasn't fucking worth it. Mm. Oh, I, I know you suffered, Shannon. I know you did. <laughs> this is god awful. And I gave you Naruto spin off, so sucks to be you. <laughs> I uh, by the it. way, I think we can all, I think we, we can both agree that Pinkie Pie is much of a better ninja than Naruto is. Oh god, yes. <laughs> She can sneak up on ponies every time, and she can even hide inside 
uh, church bells. <laughs> um, I hate to tell you this, guys, but Goku from Dragon Ball Z is a better ninja than Naruto is. Oh, yes, yeah, shut up. You know what? I, uh, I, I am a I better ninja. Super I sane am on a, the I am, a, I am a better ninja than Naruto. I mean, my cat is a better ninja than Naruto. <laughs> Everyone is a fucking better ninja than Naruto. I mean, so he's a, he is as subtle, <laughs> he is as subtle and inconspicuous as a I don't know. As a republic, as a Republican Party committee, I don't know. I just, I just went random there. Okay, so the, did you have some point in bringing up ponies besides you know disturbing us because we do have a yes. time limit on this podcast? Am I wrong? Uh, yes, I do have a point with the ponies. I was, I was actually, you know, many people likes the the pony show, the the quirky pony show. Let's say for many reasons. For my one of the reasons I like it, it's that if you go, basically, if you go beyond the very, very discouraging title, which is very discouraging, oh. <laughs> and the even more depressing opening title sequences that, believe me, Ross, oh, I, had the the very, I had the very same, re- same reaction when I saw that opening the, very, the first time around. But if you go past all that, you might find a very a surprisingly rich... Fantasy Omnibus. I mean, this show has freaking everything. From demons, to dragons, to dog people, to manticores, to ancient gods of ultimate powers, to undead fairies. Not undead Ross fairies, regular <laughs> undead fairies. And, and also a uh, pretty rich mythos. For example, the, la- the magical land of Equestria was found on hatred, prejudice and a, and a secular long war, actually. I'm not kidding. It's canon. I mean, See, the, hold just, on one second. Paradise. Yes. Bring a dagger of brony slaying. Anyway, what was uh, I think I had a point. Oh yes. So I like I like uh, the quirky quirky colorful pony show because it has a rich fantasy lore and some occasionally epic fighting scenes. Even I mean, in the latest episode of the final of the second season. The ponies are actually fighting off an horde of undead fairies doppelgangers. And Twilight Sparkle, and yes, I know all the names, is used as a magical machine gun by Pinkie Pie, which apparently she's not only a ninja, she's also a fucking mercenary. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so it's uh, just genuine. She always got everything. Yes, it has everything. And you know what? As a fantasy context. It's a much more believable show than Game of Thrones. Dun, Don't get dun, me fucking started. Dun. Okay, I... and <laughs> this is where I this is where I wanted to go with my argument. Actually, I'm going to do the unthinkable. I'm going to have My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and Game of Thrones in the same sentence. <laughs> oh have fun with that. Okay, Ross. Uh, I do believe you don't like that show either. Care to illustrate us why? Okay. First of all, doesn't seem like it even needs to be set in a fantasy world for the majority of the plot, at least from the first season that I've seen. I've Thank seen almost you. Of the first season. It's basically all political intrigue. So, number one, it doesn't even need to be fantasy. And that's the point. Number two. There are way too many freaking characters to follow and no redeemable payoff in the foreseeable future. It's really arrogant when a show is basically saying, yeah, you're going to sit here for three seasons before, you know, you're actually going to get a payoff for this character's arc. Uh, Shannon, do you have anything to say about that? Basically, Ross just summed it all up. Yes, in fact, that's all. That's one of the many problems I have with this show. But aside from a pure critical, pure critical deconstruction, the fact that most of the cast doesn't work and most of the characters are there to say what they're going to do instead of actually doing doing the things they were go- they say they were going to do, is also the fact that it yes, it's basically a, a period piece set in a fictional medieval era that serves more as a political allegory of today's, uh, well, political situation, really. In fact, there are, there are many hidden references to U.S. politics, as I heard. 
But aside from that, I, when I think about fantasy, I think of, well, outlandish worlds and magical creatures, creatures that go, that go beyond human logic. They go beyond the logic of human. So you're logic. thinking of something along the lines of, like, Dust Layers, or Record of, Record of Lotus War, or heck, even Supernatural, if you want to um, really um, throw it out there. My, even My Little Pony. In fact, if you would remove the ponies, and maybe use some other more manly fantasy races, and you change the name into, I don't know, my... I don't know. My, my little uh, dragon. There we go. No, here, Instantly no, manly. No, here, no, here is a, no, here is a cool. My little dragon sounds actually m more gay than you think it is. <laughs> and no, I don't know. No, I don't know. So, no, so, throw some, throw some Lovecraft in it. I don't call it my little Cthulhu. Lovecraft is magic. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the point. The point is when you think about fantasy, do you think of magic creatures? Uh, protecting some magical distant land called from bright and quick, from ancient gods bent on total destruction and a, a full a rich full on lore that takes its uh, prime from uh, Greek mythology, Christian cosmology, Western East, uh, Western Easter folklore, etc. Or do you think of a political allegory? So okay, so basically what? you're trying to say that. Um, basically, My Little Pony is far closer to something like Lord of the Rings than Game of Thrones will ever be. I understand that. Uh -huh. But that doesn't mean that I haven't seen this sort of thing done well. Actually, I watched a little anime called Spicing Wolf. That's actually oh, pretty much this, God, like, fantasy God. setting, uh, but it, it really doesn't do a whole lot with it. It kind of keeps it kind of grounded in reality. And that's, no, that's the fact. That's the thing. My Little Pony actually does surprisingly a lot with its lore. It doesn't waste it. I mean, you've seen one episode of that show, the one that I forced you to watch, let's admit it. And I liked it because of the... Well, the character development of the care of Pinkie Pie for many reasons, but there are actually episodes when they, oh no, I don't know, when they fight off Hydras and dragons and even, and even a fucking constellation bear. In fact, the brainy one of the group uses her magic to pretty much fend off a giant bird the size of a palace, basically. Mm. I don't know. The Rainbow Dash can uh, f can break the barrier of sound and create a a beautiful rainbow that can de that can destroy rocks. Just saying. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and uh, this, I have seen the death battle. Okay. And there is this. And there is a star, an actual Star Trek villain at the beginning of season two, which is the uh, actually is it's Q from Star Trek: The Next Generation playing a, playing as himself as a villain called Discord, which is the literal embodiment of chaos. So yes, they do something. Even for a little kids show, they do something with their lore. Why is it that we get to enjoy? Cool fantasy stuff from children's show like My Little Pony or even Adventure Time, which I don't enjoy in the least. <laughs> Why? Which which they are colorful, bright, and creative. They have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of variety in creatures and everything. And then a show, a, sh a supposedly mature show that calls itself a fantasy, like Game of Thrones. It's all about. This family of humans verbally assaulting this other family of humans, and every chance they got to uh, to portray a battle sequence, it's basically cut off. So it's people talking, yeah. talking. Uh, and by the way, there's tons of softcore porn because that's yeah. probably the only reason people watch that show. The softcore uh, porn. I actually, li I actually like those. I actually like those sequences better because they actually flesh out more the background on the show, and they focus on. Minor characters, well, having softcore sex 